the brand new Honda Accord. We did a video on this during the launch where we had some mixed feelings about it. Some of it had to do with the drive route that we were on. A majority of it had to do with the styling and the mentality behind the car. They were purposely not trying to overstyle this and make it for the widest audience possible. And that's a blessing or a curse depending on who you are, namely in the sedan market that is starting to dry up. But the main thing is when you get over that and you get on the interior space, and we've said this now about the Civic, we said this about the CRV, the Pilot, this is Honda's best interior generation they've ever done. It takes a lot of the styling from the past in terms of dashboard size, visibility, small A pillars, great physical controls. Everything in here does not require a instruction manual on how to use things. Physical shifter, great storage, cup holders where your cups aren't flying, door pockets that actually store something. When you go to adjust HVAC, you don't have to be in the infotainment or in some touch interface. It's the best blend of old and new, and a lot of that has to come down to their implementation of technology. It blends into the background. While the infotainment has been a sore spot for many Hondas, when you look at the, the older generation infotainment, it was slow, it was laggy, it was, it was basic. It was, it was too basic. And the updated infotainment that they're moving forward here with Android Automotive, very, very fast. Everything works. It's super quick to get around. You don't have to mess with it. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay work almost flawlessly. And it, it's still got the physical controls you need and the gauge cluster has been improved greatly as well, where again, you interact with it in a minimum fashion and when you need to get around it, it's great. There's still a couple things that they've fallen behind and that is rear view camera. I mean, we've said this about other Honda products. It looks like something that the, the camera feed looks like something from the 1990s on here. So that's one thing that you'll notice right away when you use this. If you're used to good 360 cameras, this doesn't have that. The seats are ultra comfortable. They updated the seat architecture for all their new cars. This feels more upscale than it used to be. They were always kind of rigid before. These you just kind of fold into the seat and you become this jelly roll with it. And it's a very good seat for long-term driving or longer trips. The back seat is enormous in this car like most Accords. This is a really a full-size sedan at this point. You can float back there. Definitely a car that you can use every single day if you don't need the hatch of like an suv you're gonna have more than enough space in here to to do whatever you need but really the only other thing to talk about is the base audio system in here is average at best when you get to the bose if you really care about audio they do do a good job in their sedans the bose is way better than most of the other cars we've tested but really we're going to go in the shop now and we're going to talk about some of the technical attributes of their hybrid system Mark, we're here in Illinois and we are underneath the new Accord and the first thing I want to talk about is the platform. This is on their small car platform that is shared with things like the Civic, but more relatable to this vehicle is actually the CRV due to its footprint. So, so it's got an aluminum front subframe, strut front, multi-link rear. There is a reasonable use of materials throughout this, but the main thing if you are coming from the prior generation Accord is a much greater use of NVH materials. This is a more refined, rigid architecture than the last vehicle. Yeah, it's the same broken record we see with most cars. The, it's this evolution of trying to make things quiet, more refined, and in a car like this... And bigger. And bigger, yeah. You can't really argue the result, which we're going to talk about in the drive. Uh, some of the things to talk about with the Accord is it's front-wheel drive only. You don't have an all-wheel drive option here. And you have two drivetrain options. You have the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's an every Honda product. Evolution it's, of the old product. Correct. There's been some internal improvements, including a turbo change, I believe. And then the CVT has had some improvements as well. That's only on the bottom two trims. When you go up there, you go to the hybrid, the dual motor hybrid setup, which has two motors. One is exclusively for charging the battery pack and the engine, the Atkinson cycle engine is also lower horsepower, but it's mostly used as a generator to also charge the battery pack, but it can kick on to supply more power. And the, the system is designed to be very natural. And when you drive it, it will run in EV only mode most of the time, as much as it can for efficiency. But when that engine kicks on, it's not really perceptible. And the way that they've programmed 
the drive unit, one of the, it's direct drive, that electric motor can power the wheels and decouple the engine completely. But when they're married together, the way that they do the programming of the electric motor can simulate shifts, which is really interesting. And it's not like CVT shitty shifts where it's like rubber bandy. It feels like you have a torque converted automatic in here, which eliminates the, the problem that we have with a lot of this like rubber bandy or like that holding gears at a high RPM. So what are you gonna expect from this car overall, Jack? Like what, what are some of the other factors to talk about? The main thing I think is fuel economy, to be honest, and torque. You're about 200-ish horsepower, mid 200s for torque, and fuel economy most of the time, at least with the hybrid, is really, really high 30s, low 40s. And that is a huge selling point for this vehicle, honestly from like a macro perspective, this is just the sedan variant of the CRV. Yeah. <laughs> it is all the same stuff you've seen now in all the new Honda products. It's it's a more refined, safer vehicle than it used to be. It's bigger than it used to be, prioritizes efficiency of both the interior packaging, so you get more space, exterior as far as aero treatments increase fuel economy and further lower NVH, and of course, the most fuel economy possible. Gone is a two liter, gone is the V6. You can't get a manual anymore. You get two variants of an automatic, and this is now a cruiser. That's right. And it's still, though, it does have the Honda thing where it's easy to get at everything, easy yep. to use. You drop this panel, changing oil, all that stuff is traditional Honda stuff, including jack points, which we don't talk about a lot. But Hondas are one of the easiest cars to get up in the air, not like you're going to have it up in the air, but they roll their jack points underneath. There's no pinch welds that you know cut your pads in half. So it's one of those things the, the engineering part, they still haven't forgot like, hey, people are are gonna use this as a normal car. And that's one of the, the huge highlights of Honda ownership. Yeah, despite it being a commodity product, and I mean, this thing is cheap. It's in the low 30s for a very well-equipped one like this, or the high 20s for a 1.5. They don't just crap these cars out, they care. And they know that the owners who are buying these vehicles expect them to be reliable and keep them a long, long time. But with that, Mark, I think it's time for us to take this for a quick drive. Sounds good, Jack. Mark, I've activated sport mode in our Accord Sport Hybrid. Why? Incredible performance, just incredible. It almost sounds like VTEC. Played through a Casio keyboard. And sadly, Mark, we're back where... The real world? Yeah, where not there's no it. happiness <laughs> left in the world. We're here in Illinois. We're not in the toge of California. Um, and we're back to back with a regular CRV hybrid. What do you think? Uh, so when we drove this initially during the launch in like canyons or whatever you want to call them, back roads the, the, in California. The toge. The toge, yeah. I mean, th that's not where this car was at its best. And the updated drivetrain, it, you know, it's de definitely not highlighted there. Now, when we're in regular roads, when you're stuck in traffic and doing, doing your commute, I really, really love driving this car and there's a couple reasons why the two motor hybrid system you know it, it finds a great balance of being an ev most of the time the fuel economy when you drive it like normal is always over yeah, 40 miles to the gallon. over 40 always over 40 and because this accord has moved into the more smooth uh, upscale feeling. It's a quieter car, at least in the front seats. The seats are far more comfortable in the interior space. The usability and the way everything works, including the updated infotainment, which I talked about in the interior space. I, I really, really think this is one of my favorite cars I've driven in terms of a sedan that does everything for your daily commute and your actual usability. If you're putting on, you know, 20,000 miles a year, this is amazing. There, there's literally nothing I can complain about other than the fact that it has really no soul to it. And it, the drivetrain is very, very, like as smooth as it is, it's a putter. It's not the quickest thing on the planet. The Accord in the past was a affordable sports sedan for the masses. It gave people who didn't get to experience things like a three series, a five series, or like an S4, the opportunity to have some of that fun and dynamic character at a much lower, more affordable price. This is no longer a sports sedan. This has now become a luxury sedan that 
more regular people can get an, at a much lower price. Its character has changed dramatically. Yes. It's no longer that fun two liter that you can have with a manual or a 2.4 natural aspirate that you can have with a manual. It's not that car anymore. It's almost like an Avalon or an E-Class or something along those lines that gets 40 miles a gallon, is very quiet, exceptionally comfortable, and very usable. The back seats are big, the trunk is big, it's got a good interior space. It feels like a more expensive car than it is. Is it a worse car than the last vehicle? No. It's better in every metric, it's just more boring. And that's yeah, the problem. I think they've changed the, the focus to your point. You made a really good point because when I was younger, I bought an Accord Coupe with a V6 and a manual because I I wanted some of those elements of fun to drive, like that sports sedan coupe thing, but I didn't have 35, 45. To buy like you know, a three series. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't afford that. So, and I couldn't afford a TL at that time, right? So the Accord brought some of that engaging driving experience there. And I'm, to be fair, rose-colored glasses, it was not good dynamically. No. That car was but never was good dynamically. But it was, it felt, it had some of those, like, fun to drive and engaging things. And even the last-gen car, and that was the thing. Honda came out like, okay, we ditched the V6, but we're going to give you a turbo. We're going to give you the, the, the D-Tune Type R engine with a manual. They, they made that effort there. And we drove that car, and with an open diff, it was the same problem as the old Accords. It was, it, like, when you really got on it, it wasn't great. But it was still, it had that fun part. That is not here anymore. All the driving parts of this car are way better than they used to be. It, everything's more refined. The, the linearity is good. The ride quality is good. They've reduced road noise. All of it's better. It's just lacks some character. And I don't know. And it really depends on the person you are looking at this. If that's really going to be a big deal breaker, because as I've driven it more, and I know you have too. I love driving it because when you forget about the fun to drive, which you're never having on I mean, a normal road. Right yeah. now, we're this right behind a dump truck, right? spraying rocks everywhere. I'm doing five miles an hour underneath the speed limit, and I'm being passed by a CRV. In this real-world environment, it's a much better car than the last vehicle was. Agreed. So, Mark, with that, let's have you summarize this in the final thoughts. Sounds good, Jack. Final thoughts on the new Accord. Uh, we've kind of mirrored the same broken record discussion during the drive and when we drove this initially during the launch. My opinion has changed a little bit, about half. When you look at the sedan market, it's dried up quite a bit. Companies are just putting sedans out there just because they kind of have to, to to meet that market. This car, mechanically, interior drivability as at, is at a high level. And you realize this more as you drive it every single day and you actually put the miles on it, you get stuck in traffic. Ride comfort, isolation, it's quiet, the drivetrain is seamless and it gets amazing fuel economy. And the running costs are gonna be low here. You don't have the luxury car problem with adaptive dampers, air ride, you know, luxury car things you don't have to deal with. So you can still use this as the intended appliance. And I think Honda did a really good job in terms of engineering on this, much like the CRV, the Pilot, and the new Civic. They all had this same feeling of you're just happy to drive it. Now, the other 50% is I feel like it's lost some of its character and soul. And we talked about this with the exterior styling. It's very bland, it's very generic. And, and there's things about it that they could spend more effort to make you look back at it and just think about it a bit more than it is. It just disappears in the background. It has this Ford Taurusness to it or this rental car feel on the outside. And I, I can't get rid of that feeling, namely when I'm spending over 30,000. But I personally would buy this car as a hybrid. I think that's where it's best, unless you don't have the money because you're gonna return the refinement and the fuel economy of having that EV only style driving for most of your, your commute, which is great. I'm gonna leave it at that. We'll cover more of the trim levels in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video.